Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we are taking a look at this Etern 10 kVA UPS system. Now this is only the inverter part. It is the model number 9355 and it is made to work with a battery voltage of 364 volt DC. Now with the energy prices in 2023 and with recent changes in Denmark to how the transmission fees are calculated and built to the customer, it has become very expensive to use power between 17 and 21 in the evening. So if this really works, I think I will build this into a project where we can charge battery banks when the energy price is low and use from this when the energy prices are high. So let's first Get it torn apart, take a look inside, see if it actually works, because that is kind of a premise for that project. At the front of the unit we have a LCD panel with control buttons. We have a option 1 network interface to the connect UPS system or software. And there is some alarm outputs or relay outputs and we have a serial interface. Along we have two fans. At the back of the unit we have a battery breaker and we have a rectify input breaker. We have the marking plate which says that it uses 64 9 amp hour batteries and that is 64 batteries put together for the 384 volt DC. Now if that is two strings in parallel that could be. It says up here that it weighs over 55 kilograms and I can attest to that. Down here we have the large mains input and output plugs which connects to the terminals just behind this plate. With the cover off, we have revealed the input and power factor correction board. Over here we have the input AC voltage from the main supply. Goes through a normal LC filtering and we have some common noise chokes as well. We have a lot of current measurement transformers sitting all around this unit. Over here we have the bypass functionality and we also have the UPS output over here. So this is actually the AC output. Up here we have the battery connection, the red and black wires. And we have the main DC lines going over to the main chokes and also to the main ITPG bricks. We have also a fusing for those voltages going to the large AC switching bridge. Now over here we can see a lot of gate driving transformers and we have actually six half bridges or half bridge modules. The white ones we can see behind here. These are a part of the PFC front end. Up here we have the control logics which connects through this flat band over to the rest of the control board sitting on top of the unit. At the other side of the unit we can see we have the large inverter board here which is marked up with supply for the inverter. We have the battery connection and down here we have the choke connection. Now the chokes are the output chokes which are these huge set of ferrite cores sitting over here. A really big bunch which really weighs a lot and packs a quite a lot of power because 10 kilowatt of power is going through these at three phased AC. Now the rest of the board over here is a lot of the control logic which we can take a look at when we got get the board out. Behind here we also have the heat sink where these pressure fit mounted skip modules I actually hold with these plates up against contact points on the PCB. With the back plate for the connections removed, we can see that it is actually two parallel set of wires going out to the internal battery. And inside here it says, several battery cabinets might be in parallel. Be sure the cabinet under service is totally disconnected. And we have a small terminal here for external battery. So it all just goes parallel up into this 50 amp breaker. So now we can try to connect the input and see if it works. As this is an online double conversion UPS, it means that it has a battery in the middle between the rectifier and the output inverter. This is also where the DC link is. So without batteries connected, we should be able to fire it up and probably get a battery warning here in the display. So let's try to plug it in. I'm not too sure that this actually works. It does hum a bit from a small internal power supply. But other than that, that does not seem to be much alive. I cannot really measure any housekeeping voltages in the unit. 
but uh, let's try one last time and see if it trips the breaker again. Yeah, there it goes, the breaker tripped again. With the main inverter PCB taken out, we can really see now we have the whole driver section where we have a lot of decoupling and driver ICs and isolation chips sitting here have some the first row of gate driving transformers sitting here. We have a housekeeping power supply. And then we have the DC bus capacitance. This is 450 volt DC at 1500 microfarads. Now these two backplane connectors connect up to the main CPU card, which we can take a look up afterwards. Now what's interesting here is that we have 15,000 microfarads of DC bus capacitance, but it's split up. So to actually make room for a power supply here, they have put half of the DC capacitance over here through three wires. It would make much more sense to put the power supply out on a different board and keep your stray inductance in your DC link low by having all this on the same PCB. Oh well, I guess they have some wise design choices behind that. Now the main um, ITPT sitting here are Skeep module from Simicron which is Skeep 37 AC125, which a fair guess would be that it's 37 amp at 1250 volt DC. And as we can see here on the PCB, they are just press fit onto these blank spots, tint connector pads with a lot of small dots here. So it both has a lot of uh, through hole connections through the PCB for yeah, also uh, heat sinking the connectors, but also just, yeah, press fitting very different sized modules. The main processor of the controller board is a Texas Instrument DSP TMS 320 IC, which is a special purpose DSP chip. Now to help that along, it has a lot of sampling circuits that we see up here, which is all protected by resistors and probably seen at diodes. Then we have a, a bit of sequencing as we get closer over here. And here I think we have all the analog conversion, analog measurements over here and digital over here. As here we have Altera Max FPGAs. I hope you enjoyed the teardown. It's a bit of a shame that it did not work and the project with building my own battery wall will have to wait until I find a working UPS. So after all, this is a very simple unit and actually it is almost identical to the larger 30 and 60 kVA units that I have found. But this is just a single inverter module that you can see a lot of resemblance to how the DC bus is made and with the Skeep modules placement. So check out the links to my other UPS and larger UPS tailoring videos down in the description. So until next time, see ya.